If you love art journaling, but have always been intimidated by the thought of adding faces into your art journals, then this series is definitely for you. What I did is starting last week, that was episode one, this week is episode two, I went through and taught everyone how to draw a face. And then from that, I made a template, which then I converted into a PDF that you can actually download and print off and then transfer in to your art journals. And the whole idea is that starting with sort of a base face is that you can create so many different faces and characters just based off of a, a well-proportioned face. So I hope this whole series gives you the confidence and the know-how and how to begin starting to incorporate faces into your favorite art journals. So last week I did a few just generic backgrounds and then today I'm starting with the very first project where we transfer that face base template onto one of the really easy backgrounds and then we start building out our first face. And the fun thing about today's project is all I use is a couple of pencils and a blending stick. And the results are really, really easy and they're really powerful. Then next week we're gonna do another fun project. So let me just tell you a little bit more about the background and then we will take it from there. Um, I just collaged very quickly four pieces of scrapbooking paper using matte medium. And then using matte medium, I also just dragged some ink around the corners of the page, after which I transferred the face into my art journal. So it's just outlined here in pencil very lightly. So today, this is where we are starting from. Ah, I keep forgetting to introduce myself. My name is Karen Campbell. I'm a mixed media artist, and my job here on YouTube is to teach you everything I know about drawing and mixed media so that when you sit down to create, you're just having fun. All right, so let's dive in. The first thing I notice in this journal page, which is a very typical journal page for me, is that this, you can see the outline. I did this at the end of the last episode. So you can see, just as a recap, you have your face, base, you have your transfer paper. So I just put this on here with the carbon side down and then I just trace it so it shows up here now. But what I notice is that the print is kind of so bold that I'm afraid if I draw on top, you're not gonna be able to see that very well. So the first thing actually that I'm gonna do is just put down like a really thin layer of gesso and so that it will lighten it up. Gesso is awesome, it's like a primer if you're not familiar with it. I think you guys are all mixed media artists, so I'm I'm guessing everybody knows what it is, but it um, it kind of preps, doesn't kind of, it preps the page for acrylics or any other mixed media work. And um, it's, tra it's transparent, it's lovely, because when you put it down, I, I want to see the text showing through. I really like that. So I don't wanna cover it up. That's why I'm not using white acrylic paint. And again, if you wanna see the making of this background, just check the eye in the corner of the screen. You can refer back to that video after you watch this one if you wanna make a similar background. Super easy, super fast, and super fun. So I'm just gonna dry this really, really quickly and then we will start. All right, so the vi this is the first time we're actually using these templates in our art journal, so I wanna keep supplies super simple because I wanna show you what just adding a face can add such a big impact and be so awesome and easy to do if you have a template like this. And um, it just adds really, it's just so much more exciting to see a face looking at you in your art journal page than just flowers, random backgroundy things, text. To me anyways, I think it's super fun. So I'm hoping this whole like face-based template series gets you excited and about adding faces to your work. It also helps you overcome like skills if something is not, is not super, um, hopefully having the template itself makes it really easy for you to do this step. So I was flipping through my um, How to Draw and Find Your Style book and I was wondering if I could incorporate one of the styles that I talk about in here and I thought this one would be super good because I feel like if you take out your hand, she's like, mmm, pastries and cupcakes, which are all over this page. So I thought, perfect. Um, and this book is how to draw, but it, well, it's literally called how to draw and find your style. But in it, there I have different examples that walk you through step by step how to draw faces from scratch in these different styles. So I love this sketchy style. 
This is front facing. So I thought I would use this as our reference. I don't need to give the, <laughs> the artist credit because the artist is me in this case. Um, so that makes it super easy. But I'm going to show you how to tweak our template to make this face. So you need to start with a soft pencil. So I'm starting with my yummy pencil set. I'm going to start with an 8B, which is pretty soft. And the reason I'm doing that is because I like this sketchy style. Um, and this is super cool. We already did our face building and guidelines last week. If you want to make your own face or draw your own face and you would rather not have the template, and if you do need the template, please let me know below. I also have this cheat sheet that goes over the guidelines. You don't have to buy a book. You can get this cheat sheet directly from me. Just let me know in the comment section below. And it has exactly how to set up and where the guidelines go to set up a correct proportionate face. So we have already here transferred down the outline. So I like this. Um, I like actually how like squared off her face is. So actually what I'm going to change today is the shape of the face. So using this as my reference, I noticed that this goes down here. So I'm just going to add a little bit more pressure to my pencil and I'm going to come down here and then I'm going to make this really squared off jaw. So I'm kind of ignoring the face shape. We're gonna, that's gonna be what we're changing today. Next week, we're gonna leave the face shape alone and we're just gonna actually change the shape of the eyes and the eyebrows. So we're gonna do a different tweak every week. Um, and then again, her neck is kind of squared off as well. So there's that. All right, so we again, we're changing her eyes and then we're adding this hairstyle. So that's the face shape done. And if I zoom in a little bit closer, you can just see I just left the other lines there because there's gonna be so much shading on this one that that kind of just gets blurred, blurred in the background. So I'm not even gonna worry about it. Her mouth is actually pretty much the same, but I'll show you how to shade that. So that's pretty exciting. So I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm looking at that my book reference. That's page 155 if you have the book already and you want to work with me. Um, so we're going to do kind of round out the lips a little bit more. And then the lip line is actually pretty straight in the middle. So we're going to go straight across. I think it comes up a tiny bit and then it kind of goes down this way. And then the bottom lip is a bit fuller. So I will add a fuller lip like that. And again, there's going to be a lot of um, shading happening. So I think it actually goes up like this a little bit. It's really like close enough. I don't really know if that even mattered <laughs> at all. So for, we'll do the shape first and then we will change it. Now I notice even here, like her jawline is even wider than what I have it over here. So we can do that if we want. You can change anything at any time. That's the beauty of art and pencils really. We have our ears. Our ears are between the nose and the eyes. So we get up into this here. And then this over here. Okay. She looks like she has a beard. Not exactly the look I was hoping to go for. <laughs> oh, she literally looks like she has a beard. It's okay. We are going to. <laughs> We're gonna blend, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> All right, so her nose, she's got this, she's got these like serious uh, nostrils happening here. With a little bridge here. We have our nose parentheses, I always call them. And then her eyes are gonna be closed, so this is fun. So where her eyes are in the template, we're actually gonna have um, just a straight line right in the center. How weird is that? Whoop, and then whoop. That looks really weird. And she totally looks like she has a beard. 
this is <laughs> I can't even erase that line the, the, it's, the graphite is not coming off of the uh, template oh boy we're gonna have to get creative with our shading <laughs> All right, and then we have, let's just dive right into the, we need to lay down a little graphite here and around her eyes, and then we're gonna mush it with our blending stump. Okay, so we're gonna go like here, and then we're gonna go here. So there's a, the lid is like this, just to give you a reference. So we're shading in this part of it. We'll get, we'll get started slowly, we'll build up on the shading. So then this eye is the same thing, like here's the lid. And then we have shading here. Now I'm leaving the middle exposed because what happens is there's this, the eye is a ball, right? Eyeball. And so the reflection, the light hits it here first and then this curves away. So it's darker at the curves. Okay, and then we have our eyebrows. So I'm gonna go up a little bit here. It's, it's roughly, the eyebrows start roughly even with the corner of the eye. And then I'm just gonna start by doing some short little jaggy lines. And then it quickly fades into just a little curve. And we have over here. Whoa, and then again up and down oh she's envisioning those cupcakes <laughs> and then her head look at her beard sweet um and then we have her the top of the scalp is going to be up here so in this case remember hair has volume and normally the first step you're going to do is pick a part and then go up and over and down into the head but there's no part on this because she's got a top She's got a top bun. So we just, we always add volume outside of the oval of the head. So this was the top of my template, template, however the heck you say that. So there was this, it's actually like way up here. There's always volume, hair always goes above and beyond that. I don't care if, if the head, if this bun is like right on her head, it's, you still draw it with volume. The head is so much bigger than you like ever realize. And then all of these hairs are getting pulled up into that bun. So you come into, I already know this line is inside of our egg, <laughs> of our crazy template head. You see how high that is? Okay, so the top of it will get stuck up in the bun, which is here. And then all of this hair, right, gets pulled. It starts approximately, so if that's the top of the oval, we're gonna come down, because the hair goes up above the oval and it also comes into the oval of the head. Every hairstyle goes up and over and down into the head space. It doesn't matter what hairstyle you're doing. That is a rule. Okay, so this will all get pulled up right starts the hairline is here and then all just goes up until that hair messy bun okay this is our this style is called sketchy style so we get to be nice and messy and loose so don't need to be precious about your brush strokes we do need to work on her beard <laughs> it's very triggering me <laughs> but before we do that we can add a little bit more shading so I'm gonna take just, I'm still working with my soft pencil. I'm gonna add, you can see right here, this is the step before the final step. We're gonna add graphite in these areas. Okay, so we have that. Remember the bridge of the nose is caused by the shading um, around the nose. So instead of doing lines, we do, we're gonna lay down a little graphite. So we're gonna take our pencils and we're gonna scribble scrabble in the areas that are gonna be shaded. So in this case too, the light source is coming straight center, which means all the parts, parts of the face, oh, I gotta get my foam head. All right, so this means all the parts from the face that come forward get a highlight. So the nose sticks out, right? So this will be highlighted. And the middle of the eyes will be highlighted because again, you can see there's, they come out, right? That's the eyeball. So the middle part will get highlights 
and the lips have some highlights because they are going to stick out. So all the parts and the chin sticks out, all the parts that stick out get a little highlight. Okay, so and the cheeks come out, right? See the cheekbones? So that's why this area is all light because that's where the light's going to hit. You see that? Chin, lips, chin, lips, nose. All lit, all cheeks lit, cheeks lit. And then all the parts that go away from you are gonna be in shadow. So that's why this is in shadow right here because it's like nooked in this little, this part, right? It's, that's, this sticks out and this goes wicked in. So that gets all shaded. But then this bulbs out again. That's why this has a highlight. And then it goes down and around, way far away. So that's why this is all shaded. Does that make sense? <laughs> you gotta love a foam head. This one, by the way, this is a lesson in my mixed media society. <laughs> if you want a real time lesson on it, do that foam head, I got you. Um, and enrollment is still open for that, but not for long. It closes on Easter, so. All right, and it closes until Halloween. I only open that for twice a year. So get in now or forever hold your mixed media piece. All right, and lovely, what's cool about the book too is that it gives you, tell you right where to go. But also I just explained it on the foam head. So this is gonna be dark because that's around the corners, right? So I'm using the side of my pencil to scribble scrabble. Scribble, scrabble. There's these areas under the nose is shaded. Under the mouth is also shaded. Again, you can see the profile of the chin. See how it comes in? So this is dark because this is, this is going to pick up the light and so is it. But this area goes in. So dark, dark. Okay, now we have the, the sexy cheekbones. Oh, first I need to have some more shading up here. Yes, we have our cheekbones, which hopefully will look like cheekbones and not man hair. Manishness is not exactly what I had in mind when I was doing that. And then under the chin is way shaded because look at how much, like in here, the sun is hitting here. This is way back. That's why this is so dark. The sun can't penetrate all the way back there because that big old chin and head is sticking out, which means you put a ton of graphite down here and make that really dark. Okay, and then the lips, the same as the lips. Remember the foam head, like this, the part that I colored with the paint is the, catching the highlights and then these parts are set back more and that's why they're shaded and the front of them is highlighted. It's literally the shapes. So we can even just do this to get started. And now comes the super duper 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 fun part which is blending with our blending sum. So fun. All right, so here's a blending sum. It's actually the dirtier the better. This is a brand new set for my drawing set at Jerry's Artorama. So I just got those in the mail. So I haven't even used this yet. But this will, it will work. So I'm gonna take this side of my blending stump. Because it was an 8B pencil, it's really smooth. And it's really graphite-y. So this takes no effort for me to blend whatsoever. But the magic lies in the 8B pencil. Okay, so I'm just gonna moosh, moosh that up. Get some shading going just ever so slightly. Run my blending stick everywhere and that is, that is like a piece of cake. Just happens really easily. And then this is going to be black because that's, again, super shady. And then we have to get in here. But the blending goes really fast when you have your dirty blending stump. Just moosh. 
moosh, and I'm keeping the center of the eyelids not blended. Okay, now the nose bridge is defined again by these shadows, so I'm keeping this empty in the center because that's the nose. Oops, I just came in too far. That's the nose. Now she's getting like super blendy, so don't worry, we'll, we'll rescue her out of that. And then here is her lips, which again, remember they're highlighted in the center, so I'm like avoiding the center of that lip there. Sometimes you can bring down, lips have those lip lines, so sometimes you can just draw those in. Now she's looking a little dirty and she lost, like she's losing a little bit of her definition because the pencil is so soft and she also has no eye lashes yet. So what we're gonna do to give her definition is just the final step. Let's make, try to get some cheeks in here and not just look like a beard. Is we'll go with, um, you can actually do a mechanical pencil or um, a pencil that's not quite as soft. You could do like a 4B. We'll do a 4B to add in back in some definition. So I will take this. We're still doing our sketchy style. That might even be too soft still. I'm gonna use a 2B and we'll drop just super fast like some crazy sketchy lines. Add in just like a little definition and like, cause like her ears are kind of fading away. So we can draw those ears back in. You could also use like a mechanical pencil right now would work. We lost her eyebrows, so let's put those back in. You can layer any supply, pencils, paint, doesn't matter. So we're gonna need to define her features again. And her mouth line needs to be more defined. And there's her eyelashes. We haven't put, even put them in yet. But we're gonna do that right now. So we are going to, I don't know if we're gonna, they're gonna go in this direction and then in this opposite and then they're gonna come straight in the middle. So, we're gonna slowly start changing directions. Changes all these lovely eyelashes and then over here. So when you hit the edges, they go out. Yeah, and so I wanted to make sure that we had a pencil demonstration for these faces because it just shows that in your art journals, you know, you don't need a bazillion supply. I mean, you totally can, and that's my favorite, but you don't need to. If you're traveling and you want to take your art journal with you, you can just take a pencil set and you like, can do so much with a pencil set and a blender. Like, so, so much. All right. So fun, and then if you wanna spray, I spray all my paintings with the same acrylic sealer, and that's if they're, um, regardless if it's graphite or mixed media or painting or anything, I spray it. So I'm gonna spray this page because it's so smeary and so soft. I wanna make sure that this doesn't like rub off every time I open it. But that's a, just a little demo with just this, by the way, looks like a dark spot, but it's actually just part of a um, one of these little cupcakes. But yeah, and if you want to add some more like quick highlights, you can go in with a you can go in with a paint pen, but you can also take a little bit of gesso and like add a little painterly look. But you get just very lovingly and lightly add some more gesso in case you like obliterated too much of something. You can always like add more highlights back under the eyes if you overshadowed kind of anything with your 
blending excitement. <laughs> it's a thing, trust me. Come like there, you can add on the chin. So just remember you can always use gesso. Maybe if this is bothering me, I could like gesso it a little bit to kind of knock it back. Um, so yeah, so gesso is all your, always your friend. You could even go in with a pen now and like even like outline it some more. Say this was really bothering me also. You could also just take a gess Jake gesso. See how undefined this side is. If that was bothering me. I could just take gesso and like knock that back. Okay, so just remember gesso is always, always our friends. And that helps her like set off the page a little bit more anyways. So I don't mind that she's blended in. I kind of like that, but just remember you can always use that as a tool. So I hope you like this really fast fun drawing using the book as inspiration and um, that's available all my books are available on Amazon but that's a good one it's like a Bible there's a lot of stuff in there so I hope you enjoy um, if you want to go back and watch the series um, click this link right here will link you back to the original face template number one, well the whole series that will show up so you can if you want to build the template from scratch you can do so and then down here, I'm gonna link the playlist that will show the whole art journaling series so you can get the quick background tutorials and a lot more instruction based on that. And I'll see you for next week. We have a huge, huge mixed media art journaling phase coming up. So I will see you next week. Thanks.